Hi there, my name is Catherine Kelly. I'm one of the physiotherapists that work here in the Southern Trust and I work specifically in pelvic health physiotherapy. So today we're going to talk about pelvic girdle pain during pregnancy. We're going to talk about what that is, the potential causes and offer some information, advice and guidance with regards how we can hopefully ease those symptoms. If you do have pelvic girdle pain during your pregnancy, it doesn't necessarily mean that it will get worse. With the correct advice, information and guidance, it can often become well managed and in some cases can completely clear. Pregnancy related pelvic girdle pain can affect one in five women in pregnancy. Symptoms can vary both in sight and severity. Pelvic girdle pain describes pain felt in the joints of the pelvis. This could be in the sacroiliac joints at the back or the pubic symphysis at the front. Discomfort can also be felt in the lower back area or down into the legs. Other possible symptoms are difficulty walking, pain standing on one leg, example when dressing or on going up and down stairs, pain on moving your legs apart, example when getting in and out of the car, problems getting comfortable in and turning over in bed, you may feel or hear clicking or grinding in the pelvis, your leg may sometimes feel like it could give way. Often a combination of factors are the cause of pelvic girdle pain. The muscles which support your pelvis and spine become stretched in pregnancy as your bump gets bigger, so they do not provide as much support as usual. The pelvic joints may move more unevenly. Some of the pregnancy hormones may cause slackening of the ligaments which support your back and pelvis. As the baby grows and your bump gets bigger, this can lead to aches and pains. It can also be related to a previous fall, injury, or accident affecting the pelvis. Okay, so here Charlotte is gonna show us some pelvic tilting on the gym ball. So naturally, when you become pregnant and as your bump gets bigger, your pelvis can start to anteriorly tilt. Um, and essentially what we want to do is practice bringing the movement into a posterior tilt. So we're tilting forwards, and um, we're tilting backwards. So Charlotte's demonstrating how to roll onto the tailbone and to sit right up, nice and tall. Charlotte's gonna have that nice big deep breath in as she tilts all that way forward, sitting up nice and tall. And then breathing out as we roll onto that tailbone, tilting that posterior. Again, nice anterior tilt, breathing in. Breathing out, rolling onto the tailbone, thinking about that posterior tilt. And again, breathing in and breathing out. Okay, so here we're gonna look at the use of the trans ab muscle, which is that lower tummy muscle, just sits down right in that lower abdomen. Charlotte's gonna place both hands right underneath her bump. She's gonna have a nice big deep breath in through the nose. And as we breathe out, we're gonna gently try and engage through the pelvic floor, gently drawing up through the back passage and through the front as if we're stopping wind of wee holding that belly button in as if we're putting on a tight pair of jeans. Keep breathing in and out, and then slowly relax and let that tummy go. So again, Sharon's gonna demonstrate the trans ab, that lower tummy muscle exercise, which incorporates your pelvic floor. And we're just gonna do it in this side position to see it in a little bit more. Okay, so let's think about that nice big deep breath in. And as we breathe out again, we gently draw through the pelvic floor, pull that belly button in. Keep breathing in, keep breathing it out, relax those shoulders down. And again, just breathing in, breathing it out, and relaxing all the way down again. Okay, so here Charlotte is gonna demonstrate some exercises in four-point kneeling. So the pelvic tilting that we've done on the gym ball, you can also do this in four-point kneeling. And this is a really nice way to offload any pressure um, from the lower back, but also on the pubic bone. So again, we're gonna think about that cat and cow stretching. So we're gonna have a nice big deep breath in as we curl all that way up and tuck that bottom underneath. And then as we breathe out, we're gonna let that belly hang nice and low, stick that bottom out. And again, nice big deep breath in, coming all that way up, nice round in the back. And breathing out, coming down, let that belly hang nice and low, stick that bottom out. So Charlotte is going to have a look at using the gym ball here. So we're going to do a variation of the trans pose where the ball is going to roll out. And again, Charlotte is going to have those two big toes together, knees just gently slightly separated apart. 
And again, that head just hangs down nice and heavy between the arms to get a nice stretch in around that lower back. Maybe into the groin a little bit into the shoulders as well. Okay, we're gonna take that gym ball back in towards the chest. And we're just gonna do a little bit of forward leaning. So in whatever position is comfortable for you, gently forward leaning um, and taking again the pressure off the people on that lower back. The weight of the baby just come down through the bum. And again, you can even relax that head down towards the ball if you wanna feel a little bit more confident. Okay, so here we have Paula. Paula's gonna demonstrate some stretches in forward leaning. So we're gonna ask Paula to bring the forearms down onto the plinth here. You could use your kitchen counter at home. We get a little bit of a wider stance in between the feet. And Paula's just gonna gently bring that bottom towards the wall behind her to get that nice stretch of the lower back, that nice stretch coming down the legs and to relax that head and to relax those arms and shoulders. We can just focus on those three nice big deep breaths in and out here, just to get that nice stretch and feel nice and relaxed. If this is feeling slightly uncomfortable for you, maybe a little bit too much of a stretch, what we can do is gently bring the weight onto the forearms, okay? Bringing the feet in a little bit closer to that kitchen counter or plinth. And we should still get a nice stretch here down the back of the legs. We can still relax the head a little bit. But again, we're just trying to work within that range that is most comfortable for you. So really important that you don't have any sort of major pain or discomfort during this, only that stretch and getting that right range for you. Okay, so now we're going to look at a little bit of a groin stretch, okay? So Paula's going to gently come into a similar position like before, bring the forearms down onto that kitchen counter or plinth in front. And this time what we're going to do is gently bring that bottom towards the wall behind again, but we're going to slowly just bring the weight to one side. So Paula's going to bring all the weight to her right hand side, that right knee gently bends, and we have a nice stretch coming up the inside of that left leg. We can do a nice few big deep breaths in here and then come back to that center again. And vice versa, let's transfer that weight to that left side and getting a nice stretch coming up in through that right hand side of that leg again. So this groin stretch again, you can work within whatever range is most comfortable for you. Just gently keeping a little pressure to one side, letting that knee bend, taking your time, coming back up and then transferring the weight to the other side. If we feel like that's too much of a stretch, then we're just not gonna push as much onto that other side. So here, Charlotte is going to show us how she would roll over or turn over on her side in bed. So she's going to bend her knees. And we encourage people to use their upper limbs. So maybe to use those arms digging into the bed to gently roll over onto one side. Okay. And then again, if we just roll over onto that other side, so if we go straight onto her back again, just using the arms to gently come onto her back again. So it can be useful on a night time to sleep with a pillow in between the legs and equally underneath the bum and maybe one to two pillows underneath the head to keep slightly raised up, especially from the second trimester onwards. So Charlotte's now going to show us how to get out of bed. So we're gonna bend up the knees and we're gonna gently roll onto the side closest to where we will get out. And we're gonna let the legs just gently hang over the side of the bed, use the upper body to gently push into that sitting position. So here Charlotte is going to show us some of the maternity belts. Charlotte's going to place the belt around her back and this is the Sirola belt that we're using. She's going to bring it right around underneath the bump at the front and there is extra rings on this belt that Charlotte can gently pull forwards to support again underneath her bump. Charlotte's going to show us one of the second type of belts that we have here, which is an embrace belt. This belt goes from high to a low position, higher in the lower back, and then right underneath that bump. Again, there's extra wings on either side that we can gently pull forward to reinforce that support. And just with regard to those belts, we want to make sure that we're only wearing these belts really when we're in standing. We wouldn't wear these belts when we are in sitting or in line. We would use pillows to position or to try and offload that bump if we need to. So here we have created a lumbar row, which is just a towel folded and rolled up. And Charlotte's going to place this behind her lower back in order to give her more support and reduce that anterior tilt of her pelvis and the curve in the small of her back when she's sitting. Okay, so here Charlotte's going to demonstrate how to get in and out of the car. So she's going to sit her bottom back into the chair, take your time, try to keep both legs together, 
coming into the car and then adjusting the seat as to what is comfortable for her. Equally when getting out, adjusting the seat backwards and then taking the time to keep those legs together and step out of the car. Do's. To reduce the strain on your pelvis, keep active within pain limits and avoid activities which make the pain worse. Accept and or ask for help with housework. You may need to rest more often. Sit down to get dressed and undressed so that you avoid standing on one leg. Wear supportive footwear with good arch support. Avoid high heels or completely flat shoes and flip-flops. Try to avoid moving your legs apart further than is comfortable. Taking care, getting in and out of the car and bed. Go up and down the stairs, one foot at a time. Going up, lead with your less painful leg. Going down, lead with your more painful leg. Don't. Avoid standing on one leg. Avoid bending and twisting. Avoid sitting twisted on the floor and crossing your legs. Avoid sitting or standing in one position for long periods. Try to regularly vary your position. Avoid heavy lifting, including toddlers. Encourage them to be as independent as possible. Thanks for listening and see attached links on screen for more information.